it is an absolutely beautiful day. A little bit chilly, however, the sun is shining, birds are singing, the wind is blowing its guts up like it has been for the last two weeks. We haven't been able to get out diving, we haven't been able to go fishing, put the boat in or anything because the weather has been shocking. Uh, however, tomorrow the forecast is looking really good, so hopefully we'll be able to put the boat in then. Uh, go for a dive, catch us some food for the week. Uh, in the meantime though, my buddy Tessa is coming around this afternoon. Um, you probably know her from Master Chef, and if you don't know who she is, uh, go look her up because she's the seafood queen. Um, we're going to do a little uh, gold band snapper on the Weber, beautiful curry sauce to go with it. Uh, and do a little Q&A for you guys because uh, lots of people are still giving me Master Chef related questions, food related questions, seafood related questions. Um, and that's what we're about, so uh, it should be a good episode, I can't wait to catch up with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute, eh? Hello. <laughs> Alright, so we're back at my place now. Jess has come over and we're going to cook some beautiful fish up for lunch. Um, we've got this beautiful gold band snapper that I got at the fish market the other day. Um, and it's going to be super easy to cook. All we have to do is get our fish. I've gutted this and I've scaled this. Um, I'm just going to put some slits onto the body. Like that. On both sides. And then, this here is one of my favourite ingredients. This is a green curry paste. You can find these at most Asian grocers. They are the absolute bomb. That goes straight onto the fish. We'll rub it in. Oh, it smells so good. Yum. Right, so our fish is ready to go on the barbecue. We've got the Weber nice and hot. It's absolutely cranking. Put it in. And that sizzle is really what you want to hear because you want to char the skin. Uh, it's going to add a lot of flavour. And charring the curry paste actually as well is going to give us a little it's going to make the flavour of the curry paste a little bit more complex and a little bit more um, sort of smoky and delicious and authentic, I think. Fish is going beautifully on the Weber. Now we have to make a sauce to go at the top. Um, this is going to be a super, super simple sauce. All we're going to do is use this green curry paste that we marinated the fish with. Straight into How a little pot. Can... Yeah, that'll probably do. All of it? Nah, maybe not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what we're going to do is fry that off in the um, fry that off in the pot, and then add some coconut cream, peanut butter to thicken it up, and that is literally it. Um, we have to make some garnishes, of course, to make it look How pretty. How cute, um, Harry's spatula, by the way. That's super cute. Hey, who did, you, did your child give you that? That's gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's going to be a super easy recipe. So um, I'll chuck this up onto the Off the Beaten Coast website. Um, and actually all of the um, all of the recipes that I've done in all of these videos are all available on offthebeatencoast.co uh, So if you want any or want some tips and tricks on how to cook some fish, uh, go over there. I've got a question. Tell me. Can you use raw natural peanut butter or would you suggest this for the sugar content? What, what do you reckon? This is so in? good because it's thick. Um, mm. I think... Got I th the emulsifiers. Exactly. I find with... Um, natural peanut butters, they split really easy and they can go hard. Um, and this just has like that, that sort of texture I think that makes, just go bigger peanut butter, I think this is the best. <laughs> or Kraft, Kraft peanut butter is so good. What about Audi peanut butter? Uh, I don't know, I don't show what Audi. Ooh. Wait, how's that smell? So that smells real good. So it's just lightly toasting. Why, well actually, Tessa, tell me, why do we fry curry paste before we cook? Yeah, we want to fry the curry paste off. We don't want um, the aromats and the spices to be raw, so we want them to toast off and just really start being super aromatic. Um, otherwise, if you have raw curry paste, it's awful. It just tastes bitter and just not nice. So you want to make sure you toast it off nicely. I think, yeah, it just adds a lot of complexity and a more developed flavour to any curry, so always fry your curry paste. Righto, that's probably ready to go. Yep. Next we'll add our coconut cream. And how much would you like me to add, Harry? Um, we want it nice and saucy, so here we go. Half a jar, half a can. Yeah, that's good. I reckon that's pretty good. Yeah. 
Mix that through. I'm just gonna go check on the fish. Look how cute you are! <laughs> all nicely all right so our green curry paste and coconut cream has come to the boil now mm -hmm. we're going to add three ingredients first is tamarind you can either use tamarind or you can use uh, lime is fine as well um, a bit of fish sauce for funk and then also our peanut butter nice so that, let's just squeeze it straight in oh yeah. okay so how much do you want of this uh, you'll know how much Yes, that. So are you doing lime as well? No, nah, probably not. And would you take this off the heat now that we've added the tamarind? Or you can you take that off the it? heat. I think that's quite thick now. Yeah. Like, we don't want a thin sauce, but we also don't uh, don't want it to split as well. So what happens if you um, over reduce a sauce that has lots of fat in it, the fat will come out of the emulsification and uh, it'll split. So. so for people watching at home, that was approximately like Maybe two teaspoons of tamarind? Yeah, two teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon. And then fish sauce, we'll do one, two, three. Yep. Nice and, and funky. Peanut butter. PB. A fresh little spoon. What would you like of this? Go a big, fat, juicy tablespoon of that. I reckon that's, that's exactly a good right. amount, hey? Perfect. All right. The fish sauce smells so good. Mm. Yum. This is going to be delicious. <laughs> now this sauce is really versatile. You can put it onto grilled chicken. Um, this fish. Oh my god, the fish. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do? I'm cooking with Harry and Tessa. Harry and Tessa. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, really versatile. Um, goes well with sort of like a chard anything. That fish is actually looking pretty good. I turn the heat down a little bit, it's just on medium, I might crank it up a bit. Um, so we're gonna flip her over. Oh. Look at that. That is delicious. Good char on there, it's nice and dry too, it's not too wet. Is it? I reckon I squeeze the lime juice and Bob's your uncle. I've got a lime here. Oh my god, I can't cut up my hand. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look how thick that is too. Now if you get seeds in there, it's just even better I find, you know, a bit of extra crunch, a bit of extra um, protein. And <laughs> I love crunching on seeds, that's great. <laughs> My other favourite thing is fish bones. Mmm, lovely. Mmm. Is, is it good? <laughs> so is it good? <laughs> That's delicious. Why Fuck haven't I ever put peanut butter in like everything? Peanut butter in everything. Like, what the hell? That's yeah. delicious. It's a revelation. It's so cute. Alright, we're gonna go to Garnish Town now. We've got a couple of things for Garnish to. We're going to serve this fish whole actually, so um, a couple of things we'll put on top. Juicy lime, chilli, some kaffi lime leaf and also some sesame seeds. Um, these are going to make it not only look beautiful but just sort of add the finishing touches that are going to make it taste delicious. So we've got our lime, that's probably fine like that, we might cut it in half to the two of us. With your kaffi lime leaf, I'm just going to... Roll these in half, roll them nice and tight, makes it super easy to cut. And you want these as thin as possible because they don't have the best texture when you're chewing them, so if they're nice and thin, um, you can't really tell you're eating them, you're just getting some sort of flavour. Whereas if they're too thick, um, if they're too thick, they just get a bit woody and not nice to chew on. That's probably heaps. Chuck that into a little bowl. Red chili. Seeds and all. Well, 
lovely. That's about it. And Sesame seeds, I just toasted these in the pan on a low heat. Kept an eye on them because they burn really quickly. Now we have three garnishes ready to go. Well done. <laughs> Alright, we're taking this fish. Do you want to do the honours? Let me look see. Whoa, yeah, that looks good. Look at that colour. That's nice. Good, eh? As Tessa just said, we are roughing it today. Uh, I did forget one ingredient for garnishes and that is Thai basil. This is by far the most important ingredient. Um, for those of you who don't know what Thai basil is, it's like this sort of aniseedy, basil, herbaceous... How else would you describe it? It's just like an aniseedy basil. It's delicious. Delicious. It's nice. You can't have Thai food without Thai basil. Or Southeast Asian food, I should say. And and cafe lime leaves. So all I'm going to do is just uh, pick this and uh, throw the leaves on top. Garnishes are done. It's time to check on the fish. Look at that. I reckon that's pretty good. Look inside there. Oh. Now I'm just going to flip it over. Check. Oh, oh yeah, no. look at that. Look at that. That's so good. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Oh, um, look at that. Look at that beauty. And you can really smell the curry base on there mm. as well. You can Delicious. see that it's not burnt, but it's nice and charred. Yeah. So we'll turn oh, the lemon off. Now it's garnish time. Give me some food, Harry. Right. So to finish this fish off, what we're going to do is pour a bit of this beautiful sauce over the top. Test made. Mm. Garnishes galore. Kathy lime leaves. Bit of chili. Lime juice. I'm starving. Sesame seeds. And then to finish. Try basil over the top. Yum. Be beautiful. Look at that. That looks so good. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yummy. Now we're going to serve this with a bit of coconut rice. All I've done here is just steam up some jasmine rice. Um, then put a bit of coconut cream through it and then salt it. And that's really, really it. We have to do coconut rice um, now I reckon some of my Instagram followers have some questions for you so Ooh. we should go sit outside we'll eat lunch and answer some of these questions can't wait Ooh, yeah. look at that oh, yum good shotgun pretty nice good saucy bit Mmm, delicious. <laughs> That's so good. Wait, actually, look at that. Mmm. <gasps> look at that, it's beautiful. Perfectly cooked as always. Would you expect anything less? Look, you never know, you know, under pressure, when someone's watching I did get you, eliminated <laughs> <laughs> pretty early on. Um, so I'll just have, yeah, all the fish. <laughs> Thank you. Um, alrighty, so I'm gonna add more of the sauce on there. That's a good idea. Thanks, Haz. Alright. So Alright, let's get into it and have a taste of this beauty. Mmm. 
spread it. Wow. So simple, but so good. It is so easy, eh? Mm -hmm. And I think like, what, there's five, six ingredients in that sauce. Curry paste, peanut butter, coconut cream, lime juice, tamarind, and fish I love it. So good. And if people don't have tamarind, they can just do lime more juice. lime juice. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm. Mm. Alright, got some burning questions from our MasterChef fans. Okay. Mm, what have we got here? The vehicle outside the MasterChef kitchen, the red one, whose is it? Do you know they don't even... I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Go. They don't even know whose it is. Um, so it's been there for years. I don't even think... Like, it's not registered, it's, it's just they been there They told me it doesn't years. have an engine in it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just Oh, a well, prop. there you go. So there you go. The... Uh, what's it, a Vespa? Yeah, the little Vespa. The vehicle, yeah. Just a yeah. prop. <laughs> yeah. What was your favourite memory from MasterChef? My favourite memory from MasterChef... I think I'll do this season. Mm -hmm. um, would have to be... Probably... Like the dinners that we would do. So we would like all go to each other's apartment. You know, one of us would be cooking a dish. You know, maybe a few of us just bring a few dishes to one apartment. Sit down, have a wine. Debrief at the end of a big day after a big challenge. Um, yeah, I think that's probably my favourite. It was actually so good, eh? How about you? Too. Um, my favourite... I'd probably have to say the same. Yeah, it was nice. Just that good sort of bonding. like... That family dinner, yeah. bonding time. Nobody was stressed about what they're cooking in the kitchen. Um, it was just very homely. Mm. I really liked that. Love this you both. This is just so good. I don't even want to answer questions. <laughs> Can I just eat this? Yeah, go for it. This is actually from Alina Duggan, uh, the winner of season eight. I can't go fishing, so how do I choose the best fish to buy? Ah, okay. Well, I think um, there's actually a website called The Good Fish Project, mm -hmm. and it allows you to look up where you, wherever you are in Australia. This is an Australian site. Unfortunately, I don't know abroad different sites that are like this, um, but it allows you to see what's sustainable in your area at that point in time, and that's what you should be buying from you know, your nearest fishmonger that you trust. Um, you know, don't buy any sort of fish that look undersized and you'll know once you read a little bit more about it, you know, yeah. the average size that you should be buying for a certain species. Um, yeah, just buying sort of what's local to your area that's sustainable. That's that's the best I think place a, to start. A big one is going to a fishmonger or a fish market that you know has a good reputation and is reputable for um, selling good quality fish yeah. and also selling sustainable Definitely. fish. Um, a big one that a big one to look out for is the quality of the place that you're getting the fish from and like the quality of the fish also tells that they care about where the fish is coming from. Yeah. And they're not just like yeah. picking up fish from, you know, some poachers. Yeah, like, like if we're in Australia, don't buy fish from Indonesia. Like we you know we've got incredible fish in Australia. Uh, incredible seafood so you know go Australian exactly do you have a favorite type of seafood to cook and to eat uh, it's always fish I think I just love fish there's so many different species um, you know fish can be cooked in so many different ways it's versatile. Um, yeah it's just uh, I just love fish or fush. I love fush I love fish because it's there's, a, there's so many recipes that you can do with it however my favorite seafood has to be a raw, fresh collar. Mmm. Never mind. That's embarrassing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you not <laughs> embarrass <laughs> it? Raw scallops, I am so obsessed with. Um, East Coast Collop diving when I lived in Tassie. Mmm. And we just pick them up off the bottom, shuck them on the boat, <laughs> popping a live, fresh scallop in your mouth. There's absolutely nothing like it. So a sweet. live one? Yeah. Is that sustainable? <laughs> Yeah, don't let, um, they have, I don't know, what's the RSPCA version? No, they're mollusks, so they're like, they don't have... They have feelings. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. But, you know. Ooh, a good one off the back of that. What's your go-to ocean fish and why? Ooh. Um, my go-to is probably, yeah, a variety of snapper. I just love snapper. It's just like... A good egg. The this flesh is, is perfect, snapper. nicely firm. Um, the flavour is delicious, it's not overly 
sort of um, gamey fish wise, like it's, it's, it's not mm -hmm. too intense. Um, and it can carry any flavor that you throw at it. So for example, you know, putting some curry paste on it, it won't overpower it. In fact, it sort of just works perfectly with exactly. it. So yeah, I think probably Snapper. And I think that is just most accessible to Australians. Yeah, Snapper's good. Um, might have to be... Chuddy? No, Coral Trout. Oh, Coral Trout, yeah. Coral. Oh my God. I mean, you know, if we're being bougie, Coral Trout is, you know, delicious. Coral Trout is, I think by far, my favorite fish. If you could only cook one dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? One dish or one cuisine? One dish. Oh. That's... Might not have to be fried Curry? Chicken. Oh, curry is a good one. Mm. Does it come with like rice and roti and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, choose, I'll choose that too. Mm. Yeah, otherwise fried chicken. Mm. Yeah, Can't go wrong like... with fried chicken. Yeah. That's a hard one. Um, is there a fish you wouldn't eat? Um, it's not that I wouldn't eat, but I, as I said, if it's not sustainable and it's being, you know, overfished in the area, then I won't touch it. Um, but yeah, I'm always referring to um, the Good Fish Guide, um, just to sustainable make sure. Sustainable Seafood Guide yeah. is also another good one. It's yeah. an app and you can go on there and like, oh, good. Um, choose your fish and that tells yeah. you all the pros and cons of being yeah. a fish. You know, like anything farmed that's probably not good for the area, like, you know, salmon can salmon, be quite Tasman hurtful. Yeah. yeah, Tasmanian Atlantic salmon is actually shocking for the environment. Um, they just produce so much waste and the food that they feed them is not great. Um, and I mean, I'm not that And educated. it affects other sort of um, marine life as well. Exactly, yeah. Like under the pens, yeah. there's just these big dead zones because of there's so much detritus and like fish waste mm. underneath the pens that it kills yeah. everything. And also because there's, they put so many, so many salmon inside the pens, um, the salmon use so much of the oxygen in the water, yeah. so the oxygen levels deplete in the natural ecosystem. Mm. So yeah, get educated. Salmon's not that great. What's your favourite way to eat prawns? Um, depends what prawns, but most of the time, honestly, I just love them just like cooked on the barbecue, de-shelled, dipped in seafood sauce, sitting on the beach. Like, there is honestly nothing better for me than sitting and looking at the ocean and eating fresh prawns. That is so true. Absolutely. Favourite thing about Queensland? Beaches. Yep. The reef. Beaches. 100%. Alright, I think that's enough questions for today. Um, we are going to go enjoy the rest of our beautiful, beautiful lunch and I think I'm going to go to the beach this afternoon. Go down the beach. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in another week. Um, hopefully the weather's going to be good tomorrow so I can get out and do it, go for a dive. Bye! <laughs> uh, you guys know what to do. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel of course um, and also give the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Um, I'll reply to all of them. Um, and go check out my other videos if you are interested in doing some other cooking. Um, I've got a couple of crab recipes and also a beautiful fish recipe as well. So, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great afternoon.